It must be important, Cassidy. Now, if you can only read. You keep your prying nose out of my business. That's what I'm doing. Going in to retire officially now. Yeah? Well, I'm retiring myself, at least while I'm leaving town. Me too. Dodge City's going to be kind of lonesome without us. I'd be glad to take a part in the shot at you to liven things up. When I go in for shooting, just to take the quad out of the air, Cassidy, I'll look you up. Hey, time a horse. When you get a town so docile that Shotgun Cassidy takes to tying up horses instead of stealing them... It's time to turn in my badge, huh? Well, here it is, Marshal. Well, I hate for you to do this, Brett. You know, Dodge City's just like a skittish horse. Liable to go off in all directions with a stranger in the saddle. No, the old towns learn to respect the law. They can feel the law here. They don't have to see it walk down the street behind the gun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going out to Tombstone, eh? Yep, Bill and I are joining my brother Arthur. He's in business there. Oh, yeah. From now on, the stars are hanging up their guns. Well, every man knows you never used one, Brett, unless you had to. Good luck to you, lad. Thanks. If the riding's rough, riding on a rocky road, don't complain if the going's tough, riding on a rocky road, don't give a hoot for anything, take an old banjo and start to sing. Riding on a rocky road, don't complain if the ride is long. Riding on a rocky road Don't complain if the wind is strong Riding on a rocky road Don't give a hoot for anything Take an old banjo and start to sing Riding on a rocky road You What's the matter? Did you break the Faro Bank? Or rob the City Bank? Bill Starr, I'm law abiding. As to that Faro Bank, though it wasn't broke, it was the recipient of a monstrous dent. And when the stage drove up and my daughter Queenie steps off, one look back of her and I takes off. What did you see? The woman I so proudly led to the altar. The one wild over my callow youth, Diamond Sal. Won't Sal follow you? Yeah, she didn't see me. I rode the corner so darn fast, my vest pockets dipped sand. You know, you fellas have witnessed the tail end of my most recent peregrination, during which I broke my record out of Texas by one minute and 44 seconds. Judge, looks to me like you could have thought of a better way to free yourself, you being the best legal mind west of the Mississippi. Son, I can't plead the case of incompatibility on the dead run. Proceed ahead. We're going to Tombstone. Tombstone? Timbuktu or the Sahara Desert. From now on in, you got company. <laughs> Eat it. Ace of spades up to the ace of clubs. Oh, why do I have to have my neck washed? Why do I? Well, Benji, for the same reason Annie has hers washed. So it'll be clean. But Annie's neck sticks out of her dress. And I got a collar, ain't I? <sighs> Supper's ready. Boy, this sure smells good. Boy, am I hungry. Beef stew, my favorite dish. <laughs> In case you're heading for Tombstone to star, the boot's on the other foot. I'm on my way to being the law there, me and this. If they want you in Tombstone, Cassidy, they must be figuring on cutting down the population. <laughs> Put up my horse. Come back, Fano, and give me some grub. Here you cleaned up in a faro game, Judge. Well, I'm staying the night, and if you're interested in a little stud poker... Shotgun, I ain't played poker with no coyote yet. <laughs> Yeah. 
You got about a hundred there. Toss it in so I can catch up with the stars. I'm a good hour behind them. Your deal, no? You got two black ages, Sean. Yes, sir. One to spare. Here, money, Judge. I'm moving out. Took me all night to beat you, but you show her off like a gentleman. See you soon, Sean. Yes, no, no, no. I, I ain't got time for breakfast. I got to saddle up. I reckon practicing law just naturally makes a man suspicious of his fellow men. Practicing law makes a man mighty suspicious. Hmm. Yeah, they're near missing. Well, Chatterbox, looks to me like you got a silent partner. Have got any rights in this town? Uh-huh. Well, I tell you, stranger, it's every man and woman for himself here. We ain't had a sheriff in a month. <laughs> hey, Gus, what are you going to do with that kimono? <laughs> Unless I miss my guess, those dresses would look pretty good on you boys. <laughs> put them on. Uh, I said put them on. Get your gun. Isn't that right, ladies? Keep whatever they got, Gabby. We won't haggle over prices. You know, I seen a real dishy gal once. She was littler than you, but no cuter, Gertie. Thanks, Mr. Olas. This is a nice shop you have here. Haven't had it long. You're responsible for the first big day's business. I have some folks settling out of town, and I'd like to buy a sort of a little girl's dress. Certainly. Pretty? About the prettiest I ever saw. What's her name? That's what I'm wondering. Oh, her name's Annie. Uh, gee, gee, that's nice. <laughs> so, he marches them back to the ladies' shop with them cowpoke shy as kittens. <laughs> Why, the Clay Brothers and Jed Crawley ain't a marker to this sawed-off shotgun tote number. <laughs> sawed-off. Shotgun. Cassidy. Shotgun Cassidy. Come on. Call again. I sure will, ma'am. Oh, yes, sir. Looks like Annie and Light here going to be the most fashionable ladies hereabouts. Now, Gabby, you know their clothes took an awful beating all the way here from Kansas. Welcome to our fair city. Thanks. My felicitations, sir. We've heard all about you and that. Well, this is only... Only half a gun, but it's made you famous, Shotgun Cassidy. In accordance with the terms of my telegram, I hereby appoint you sheriff. Well, wait a minute. Not so fast. Now, that's the way I do everything. Speedy Luke Keeler, that's me, the mayor of Tombstone. Looks like we're in fast company. Well, maybe we better try to keep up with them for a while, Judge. How are you? Who are you? Judge Whitaker, attorney in law. Oh, brought your own lawyer, huh? Pretty smart. Well, I figured he might come in handy. Undoubtedly. Indubitably. 
Well, uh, put up your horse and come over to the office. Hmm. At least he can recognize a horse. Yes, and I can recognize a skunk when I see one, especially an honor. Why, that's defamation of character. The mayor took you right off, uh, Sheriff. That's what worries me. Keeler's not a pointing shotgun for Sheriff without a reason. Poor shotgun. He might have got somewhere in Tombstone. I think I'll find out just where. Hunt up my brother, Arthur, and tell him not to recognize me. The same goes for Bill. You're closing up early, aren't you, Miss? Hmm. <laughs> Looks like your shopping is all done for the season. I'll stay put at the hotel. Right. I'll write out the bills, and then I'll hunt up Arthur. Howdy, ma'am. I can be of any service to you, just yip out. Oh, thanks. I'm looking for the a... best hotel is that way. Is this the best saloon in town? It sure is, Mom. Then I'll go this way. <laughs> saloon ain't no place for a pretty little palomino like you. Take it easy, Apollo. I grew up working in these joints. Queenie Latour's my name. Quick turns, songs, and dances. Oh, uh, an actress. What do you take me for? A bartender? I'm here looking for three things, the boss, the job, and the father. Well, Slade's the boss. Job's yours, I'll bet. If it's a father you need... You'll be one to me. Thanks. I'll settle for the job. <laughs> what kept you so long, Gabby? Getting that gun in working order? Had to do something to kill time. Should have brought my knitting along. <laughs> you ought to stick to it, Brett. You mean impersonating Cassidy? No, you're knitting. It ain't healthy around here. What'd Bill say? Oh, he just scratched his head, grinned, and said, here we go again. <laughs> What'd Arthur think of it? He ain't thinking. He ought to know everything that's going on around town here. Your brother's dead. How'd it happen? Riding guard on a stage. It was held up two weeks ago. Everybody seemed afraid to talk about it. But he didn't go out empty-handed. He took two of those varmints with him. Where are you going? I've got an appointment with Keeler at the Bonanza. I'm keeping it. I don't want you with me, Gabby. Well, I guess you're right. I always was a little too quick on the trigger for a lawyer. Lost me a lot of clients that way. Well... Guess I'd better do a little house cleaning before we start house cleaning. Two gun Pete. Two gun Pete. He was a Western man. Two gun Pete was a Western man. Wore a smile and a coat of tan. When he played cards, would you believe that he kept an ace right up his sleeve? Oh, yeah. Should have seen Pete when he dealt from the bottom. You should have seen Pete Take the boys and spot them You should have seen Pete When the sheriff got them And you should have seen Pete When the posse up and shot them Two-Gun Pete was a man of might Slept all day and he played all night And to this day he'd be alive If he held four aces instead of five Oh, yeah when he dealt from the bottom. Bottom? He should have seen feet. Take the boys and spot him. Bottom? He should have seen feet. When the sheriff got him. And he got him. And he should have seen feet when the posse up and shot him. Two gun feet couldn't ride or rope. Never heard of a bath with soap. If he went broke, he'd never grown. When his cash ran low, he'd print his own. Oh, yeah, should have seen feet. When he dealt from the bottom. Bottom? He should have seen feet. Take the boys and spot him. Spot him. He should have seen feet. When the sheriff got him. He got him. And you should have seen Pete when the party up and shot him. Party up and shot him.
Good evening, shotgun. We've been waiting for you. Well, Joe, here he is, the pride of Dodge City, Mr. Shotgun Cassidy. You are a young fella to kill so many people. We start showing off early in Kansas. Uh, Martinez, Joe Martinez, very good friend of ours. We don't see him as much as we'd like to. Well, I have much work to do. You know, this cantina is a very fine place. Someday, when I retire from my silver mine, what I only hear, I'm going to come here and spend all my pesos. Uh, and then my friend, Senor Slade, he going to retire too. Well, Mr. Keeler, I'm new at this sheriff business, but I think that you have some special work for me to do. As soon as the cost of mining property goes under the hammer and Slade here buys it in, you'll have plenty of action. Yeah? Well, what do I do? You ask the Carson tribe. Yes, and it's a man-sized job. Well, now I'm getting interested. The Carsons are plenty tough, huh? Well, they're a pack of throat-cutting, law-resistant, sheriff killing. Well, why else did I send for you? I think I'm going to like this job, boys. Maybe we're going to like you, too. I think. Now, the leader of this outfit, old Granny Carson. Did I see Brett Star? What, on sarsaparilla? Oh, now, sister, that was only shotgun Cassidy. What are you drinking? Liquor. Keeps me on the QV. That's French for on your toes. Don't get him stepped on, mister. Just don't get him stepped on. Dead Carson, mine. He's a fella that made the big strike. He ought to be rich enough to pay his taxes. He's dead. Then he's got him. He don't have to pay no taxes. Slade says they owe over $100,000. Hmm. You jack. Healer says the surviving Carsons are a pack of cutthroats. No. Yeah. What are you getting all prettied up for? I'm going calling on the Carsons. Ain't that a little mite dangerous? From Keeler's description, it'll be downright perilous. Hmm. Give me the shivers, think of it. The leader's a killer of the worst kind. Stands five feet high, over 70, and white hair, and wears a little bonnet on top of it. I'm going along just for the shivers. We ain't budging, boys. Your bonnet's crooked. Me shooting straight. Nice looking, ain't he? Well, good morning. Well, I didn't expect to see you here, Miss... Uh... Carson, I live here. It's never a good morning for sheriffs on the Carson claim. Now get, and get fast. Well, I'm not only sheriff, ma'am, but I aim to be a peace officer. Then why are you hiding behind that shotgun? And why is that old goat hiding behind them moth-eaten whiskers? Madam, I'll have you understand that this hirsute is free of habitation. Why don't you buy yourself a snood? So wild cats are bad to sell. Now, keep your shirt on. I mean, don't get yourself in a tizzle. Granny, let's hear what they have to say. My friend here is the lawyer. If you'll explain to him why you haven't paid your taxes, why if This mine's rich enough to pay all the taxes in the territory, but I can't make no money. Every time Granny sends out a shipment of bullion, the stage gets robbed. Why do you suppose I got all my family here? Because I can't pay wages. We've sunk the shafts so deep. They're just men in and out. We need machinery, and we can't get the bullion through to pay for it. Ma'am, you're in a predicament. I'm in a hole, mister, shoved in by Keeler and Slade. But as long as I can hold on, I got them. The Carson vein runs smack through every mining claim they own, and they can't mine a silver dime that doesn't belong to me. Oh. The head of the silver vein originates here. You're darn tootin' it does. Mr. Sheriff, you aim to put me off. When you do, come a-shootin'. 
I hope I won't have to, little Mrs. Fancy Bonnet. Well, I guess we'll be going back. I can't figure you out. You're not like what I've heard. Um, this is one of his good days. Come on, Scott Gunn. Mary, he called me Fancy Bonnet. He must have liked me better. Judge, what is the mining law in Granny's situation? She owns a mother load on the entire vein. They're stymied till they can get her claim. Can't even mine their own claims, huh? Not unless you want to tangle with Uncle Sam. Gabby, this is bigger than just Granny Carson. Tombstone's got to learn respect for the law. Ah, uh, there you go. Talking through a darn sheriff's badge again. <laughs> Glad to meet you, Sheriff. I'm John Anderson. You in charge of Wells Fargo, Mr. Anderson? In my humble way. I understand you've been having a lot of hold-up trouble. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Terrible. It's very discouraging to a man. And it don't help a lady now, especially if she's kind of little and mighty old. No, no, indeed. Uh, you, uh, you've been talking to Granny Carson, haven't you? Yes. I wonder if I could take a look at your shipment records. I'd like to check on Granny's story. Oh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to her. She's rather childish and given to imagining things. Your records would show whether she is or not. That's why I'd like to take a look at them. Well, the fact is, sir, the records are confidential. Are they closed to a peace officer? Not meaning any offense, sir, but your reputation makes me doubt your peaceful qualities, if you see what I mean. Mm-hmm. I sort of admire you for that, Mr. Anderson. You don't take your job lightly. Wells Fargo is serious business, sir. Well, we ought to get along fine. I take my job seriously, too. I get sad for myself, so I come to see my friends. <laughs> Mayor Keeler's in my office. Come on in. What are you doing here? Me, I get sad for myself. You already said that. You're getting so you put the dialect on with the clothes. You two ought to appreciate my versatility. Your friend Shotgun came snooping around the Wells Fargo office. He wanted me to let him see the records. What for? He's been out to Carson's, and he seems mighty taken up with old Granny. What's going on? Is he throwing in with them? Maybe Granny outbid you. Might have offered him a piece of her claim. She's a cagey old girl. Well, I played smart with him. He's got nothing on us. He knows we want the claim, and we'll get it at the tax auction. And he's doing some wondering. I got him here at a fat salary to shoot things out, not wonder him out. Look, if he's figuring on crossing us, we won't wait. We'll have to get rid of him fast. Me and the boys could meet the stage tomorrow morning as it starts with the Mesquite Bottoms. You could have Mr. Cassidy riding guard. One well-aimed rifle bullet from cover would do it. Who'll take care of the Corsons? Well, I don't know yet, but it's a sense they'll be easier to handle without Cassidy to help them. It will be as you say, senor. After I get through with him, nobody he got to wander some more. Oh, oh. Excuse me, ma'am. I misjudged you. Oh, no, I... Queenie! Oh. <laughs> Say, that bundle of new flat irons cost a dollar eighty. Why, Brett! Uh, hi, Sheriff. Well, hi, Gabby. I want you to meet Queenie the door. This is Shotgun Cassidy. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, this is real unexpected. It's a surprise to me, too. Is your mother with you? Yeah. Where's that flat iron? Uh, no, no more than Dodge City, but I'm expecting her to join me. I think I'll go along with you. Uh, no, Gabby, Miss Queenie's probably got something she wants to talk to you about. I'll meet you at the hotel. Come on. What's this Cassidy stuff? What's Brit up to? Oh, what's she always up to? He's separating the chaff from the wheat. She learned Slade or Crooks, so don't you let on you know either Brett or me. 
And you can tell your darling ma that wild horses won't drag me back. Why, you single-footed, double-gated, rotating... Ah, remember, I am your papa. Can't even get acquainted with you. How am I going to remember you? like a rainy night to make me want to buy a hat. I'd like to try on a bonnet. Oh, a heavenly day. I wouldn't wear that. Miss Latour means one something like that with an ostrich plume. You've been reading Goatee's lady book? Mr. Cassidy's been in before. He has very good taste. He sure has. Even better than I thought. You're the new entertainer at the Bonanza. Yep. Ever since Fred Starr cleaned up Dodge City, Boys all start going to bed at 9 o'clock, so oh, Queenie, I... I think that would look mighty fine on you. Say, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... What's all right, Mr. Keeler? Anything wrong? Yeah, those stage guards are the bane of my life. I heard you had some trouble with one named Star. They're all alike. They get half liquored up, but this one is just plain drunk. You'll have to ride guard on tomorrow's stage. All right. Sure have my hands full trying to run this town. There's a bullion shipment aboard. The guard might not come back. Oh, don't worry, honey. Fred will come back. Fred? Oh, I'm always getting mixed on names. I still say you shouldn't go. Let them find their own guard. No one else will go. It's up to the one who wears the badge. Ah, you're that dirtiest fool about badges. Where do they get you? A free ride on the stage? <laughs> Stage gets in that fast, they can't turn around and make a run for it. Get ready. And get Cassidy. See that? What? A flash of sun like it was hitting on Steve. Well, I don't see nothing. Turn around. And you didn't give up? Not shotgun. Don't never call shotgun unless you got him. Back to back. Fred. What do you make of it? Two things. Granny Carson's telling the truth, and it's time for a showdown with Keeler. You going in heavy? Yes. I'll hang around here, handy like. Mr. Anderson Martinez, so sure of himself. Oh, he'll get Cassidy all right. Doctor, quick. My hand. What'd you do? Wave at him? Like shooting fish in a rain barrel, and you've got to let him get away. He's got eyes like a hawk. He never came close to us. What were you trying to do, Keeler? Have me killed? Why, uh, Cassidy, I... I had no idea that... This Martinez would miss. No, me, senor. I just come to talk to my friend Slater. Snake oil's good for a bullet hole. And a couple of snakes right handy. Now, I know you two fellows are trying to rob Granny Carson of her mind. I resent that accusation. Everything is being done in a strictly legal manner. Up to and including hiring me for sheriff. Well, shotgun, we... we expect trouble. You'll get it. 
I won't disappoint you. Where will I find Keeler, Mayor Keeler? Yonder office. But he's busy. He ain't too busy to see Shotgun Cassidy. Oh, well, that's different. Cassidy's a sheriff, and he's tough. We don't give him no lip when he's mad. And he sure was mad when he went in. So you heard about me, huh? What do you mean, went in? Say, who are you? Give me that gun. Look out! That's loaded. Slugs is my calling card. Keep your ears open and you'll hear him spelling out Shotgun Cassidy. So before appointing me sheriff, Speedy Luke Keeler, you should have slowed down. Why, you double-crossing phony, who are you? My name's Brett Stark. And I'm Shotgun Cassidy, if anyone's interested. All right, get over there. And wear my badge, too. I've been waiting a long time for this, Star. You just ought to get shot once. Come on now, Uncle Brett. I'll play some more and you can sing another. Benji, you've got a strange idea of helping the wounded. Take your mind off your hurting. Old Skybo paint was a devil saint. His eyes were fiery red. Good men have tried this horse to ride and all of them are dead. Now I won't brag, but I rode this nag till his blood began to boil. Then I hit the ground and ate three pound of good old western soil. Singing hi ho, whoopee tie yo, ride him high and down you go, son of the western soil. I swore by heck I'd break his neck for the jolt he gave my pride. I threw my noose on that old coyote and once more took a ride. He turned around and soon I found his head where his tail should be. So I says, says I, perhaps he's shy or he just don't care for me. Singing high ho, whoopee tie yo, ride him high and down you go, son to the western soil. In town one day I chanced to stray upon old Sheriff Jim. For a hoop and a holler and a counterfeit dollar I sold that nag to him. But when he plants the seat of his pants in Skyball's leather chair, I'll bet four bits when Skyball quits that Jim will not be there. Singing high ho, whoopee tie yo, ride him high and down you go, son to the western soil. <laughs> First time I ever see a feller chloroform himself with his own singing. <laughs> Gee, Uncle Brett, that was a humdinger. Well, thanks, Benji. Don't thank me. I didn't shoot you. Benji, what are you going to grow up into? Oh, I'm going to be a gunfighter like Uncle Brett. Oh, oh. You won't have to, Benji, if we can make Tombstone a fit place to live in. Liza, it was risky our coming here, but we had to light somewhere. If I was afraid of risks, I never would have married a star. Come on, I'll dish up. If Cassidy hadn't have shown up, we could have handled this thing quite like. Well, I'm not forgetting Arthur. And this is just as much my fight as it is yours. Well, let's start fighting. Beef stew again? It's my favorite fruit. Huh? <laughs> We've got to round up the whole gang and draw them into an open fight. Every man in Tombstone has a stake in it. Nobody knows you, Bill. Go in town and muster all the mine owners. Right. I'm not waiting to eat. I'm leaving now. But how about you and the judge? They'll be looking for you by daylight. Well, we won't be here. Well, I'll arrange that meeting for tomorrow night at Cherry Springs. We'll be there. Shake the leg into the bananas and tell Queenie I'm all right. And tell that Wells Fargo man Anderson to be there. We'll need his help. There's no danger. Goodbye. Bye. So I run him out of town, and he'll stay out. You're all right, Shotgun. It must be to run Brett Starr off. And to think I didn't recognize you. Why well, to be shot? You will be. You and anyone else that don't recognize my authority as Sheriff of Tombstone. I 
I brought this box so it would look as though I were delivering a dress or something. Well, you look scared. I am. The whole town's buzzing about Cassidy. Yep, the fight's really on. For anyone who's friendly with the Carsons. Like me, you mean? You, your father, and... Oh, don't fret about me. My pop's dodged lead all his life, and I don't figure he's any better at it than I. Do you think they'll catch him? Who, my pop or Brett? Oh, not either of them, honey. If I know Brett Stark, he'll learn his bunch better start figuring how to keep out of his way. Here, hook me into this, will you? I knew that. I don't know how, but I did. Even when he called himself Shotgun Cassidy, I knew he was fighting our fight. I want to help him. But I'm a Carson. They'll be watching every move I make. Well, they don't know I'm Judge Whitaker's daughter. And they ain't watching me, so if there's anything I can do to help, what? Queenie, can you? Oh, well, why not? Quick turns is my specialty. Don't gamble with romance. You can't win. You must lose. Don't gamble with romance. It's no game to amuse. Once your faith turns the wheel, take a tip from a gambler and don't take a chance. Don't gamble with romance. Don't gamble with romance. You can't win, you must lose. young fellow star. He'll be here. If he's called this meeting to figure on saving my claim, he... he... Ain't you! Ma, you catch the rheumatics. Get this meeting going. All you mine owners, listen. You know you owe Ed Carson everything you got because he first discovered silver here. Can you see his widow robbed by a pack of pious talking thieves? Boys, Keela's got me over a barrel. And that ain't no dignified position for a lady crowding 77. Mayor Keeler claims that Granny Carson's back taxes and tax penalties total $100,000. Did Anderson get here? Did you doubt my willingness, Mr. Starr, to participate in law and order? No, Anderson. I sort of tabbed you that day in the Wells Fargo office. I ain't got any use for Keeler, but this fight ain't going to do anybody any good. He's got the law on his side. Early today, Judge Whitaker and I wired the United States Marshal of the Arizona Territory and... And you're looking directly at a brand new Deputy United States Marshal. Then, boys, day after tomorrow, if Granny Carson's taxes aren't paid, her mind will belong to the man who bids it in. And that'll be Slade. Just because Mary Keeler's a crook doesn't mean anything. Granny's only chance is to pay the $100,000 to the government of Arizona. 
Now, she wouldn't ask anyone to pay her taxes. And no one man could raise that much. But all of you together could. It's your fight, boys, as well as hers. The Carsons are willing to live and let live. Once Slade gets his hands on that mine, you'll all be ousted. Robbed of your claims just like the Carsons. It's a fight, boys, a real fight. But if we win, it'll be Tombstone's last fight. We can rise it. We've got to help. Let's lick that keel of ground. We'll fight to our last dollar. We're with you, Star. Get back to your life. It's uncommon kind of all of you to lend a helping hand to me. Barring accidents, little Mrs. Fancy Bonnet, you'll come out of this a queen. At you. Shucks. Whoever heard of a queen having the rheumatics? I've asked John Anderson here to work out the shipment details. I'm flattered. However, Mr. Starr, I would prefer to act upon whatever plan you have in mind. I plan to pay direct to the county seat in Bullion. Where, of course, that amount of silver would weigh too much for the stage shipment. That's where you come in. I'd like to use some of the Wells Fargo freight wagons. I'd be very happy to supply them. But you'd have to furnish the drivers and the guards. We won't need many. Four or five will be enough. Might I suggest that the wagons start from here? This is the logical spot for uh, secrecy. Right. Mr. Anderson, to feel that we have Wells Fargo back of us is a peaceifying thought. Mighty peaceifying. Well, thank you. Uh, good night. Good night. Riding. Riding to where? That depends on where Mr. Anderson goes. I know, but we're going to watch it just the same. Oh, that little fella's been doing all right. I've got a hunch that little fella's been doing plenty all right. Look, Joe Martinez. Anderson's in league with him. He'll go to Keeler. Let's take after him. Let him go. Go? He's going. Judge, there's no one home. Must have gone through that window. He walked out this door. Why, you're a Rooney. Joe Martinez came out the door, took Anderson's horse, and started off. It was a horse. I ain't seen a double. You sure are. You just saw two men in one. Anderson? Martinez. Martinez? Anderson. Anderson Martinez. Oh! Well, I got to sit. I, I'm getting dizzy. Why did that two-faced jumping beans took us in? How'd you fare at this hocus pocus? Keeler ordered me to take the stage out. That was Anderson's job. He wasn't there. When I brought the stage back, he still wasn't there. But when I went to Keeler's office, there was Martinez. How about the bullion? How about the wagon? It'll roll on schedule. That's why I had Anderson there. That Keeler crowd will see through the whole darn business. Gabby, when you're sitting in a crooked poker game and you know the cards are stacked against you, what do you do? Well, when I know it's crooked, I... Well, doggone it, I just cram a next three ace up my sleeve. Oh, come on, we're going to start cramming. Yep. Now when they attack, they'll be robbing the United States government.
If you don't have to say it, Cassidy, one of your rabbits beat you to it. All right, all right. They're following us. We'll get upstairs and pick them off when they come in. Hurry. when you told Bill about those sharpshooters. Cassidy, drop your gun and stick your wrist behind you. I've got you covered, Crawley. Get going down the back stairs. Circle around, come in from that side. We're coming in, Keeler. You're under arrest. Hold it. Look out behind. Slade and Anderson here are going to be locked up and tried in the court of law. The first fair trial in Tombstone. All right, boys, in you go. Unless I miss my guess, you'll be a long time coming out. Come on, Pop. Where's you, daughter? To the stage depot. Ma's arriving. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> save it for her. And with you wearing it only once, uh... I bread. It'll be just as good as new. Mm -hmm. 